All right, hello everyone. This is Crota coming at you, doing a little bit of a Frost Ring Arena tutorial. I recently found a deck and I've been tweaking with it until I finally um, like this deck a lot and want to take a look. I ended up going 20 and 0, 20 victories, zero defeats getting a whole bunch of treasure and getting a whole bunch of cards and I wanted to share the deck with you. It's a very very common deck but I'll go ahead and um, show what the deck looks like first, how it's played, and then we'll go into the actual breakdown of the deck. Um, let's go ahead and battle it up here. Now the basics and the premise of the deck is like a lot of the decks out there. It uses lightning elementals, it uses gore master, it uses crush to really push through a lot of damage, and it also uses boulder tossed which which in which really works out well. Um, being able to do immediate damage to your opponent, not having to worry about blockers, is always a, a very, very good aspect. Now let's go ahead, I'm going to keep this hand. The hand seems really strong, and we'll just go at it straight from here. Usually the deck wins its games within the first four, uh, four to six turns. I'm, I've won a couple of games where on turn four I just have enough. Um, some games go a little bit longer, longer turn five, maybe even turn six. This round it may actually take a little bit longer because my opening hand, um, even though it does have a lot of shards, I just drew another shard which is not characteristically common. There's 25 shards in the deck or resources in the deck. So and it makes for a little bit of an interesting interesting time now the name of the oh wow i should not be drawing shards at this point um yeah so the so the name of the game here is to try and use the, your lionel flynn's hero power in conjunction with the gore master as much as possible the gore master is a three drop one three orc that ends up dealing additional damage or, or gets his attack doubled every time you um, gain a charge. Well, with Crackling Bolt, Crackling Sprout, Crackling Vortex, uh, okay, I'm just top decking way too much here. Um, it's it's actually really, really bad. All right, okay, gain a charge, gonna proceed to the attack phase. I'm gonna attack. Let's see if he blocks. Oh, nope, does not block. So I'll go ahead and, and save that. It pushed two damage through. Um, eventually, I did deal three damage that turn because I do have a crackling. Well, I have the arena regular that also says when you gain a charge, this deals one damage to each opponent. So very, very strong synergy in the deck. Now, in the early stages, you can usually end up winning the race by drawing the necessary cards. Okay, oh, that griffin might be a problem. Um, no, no, shouldn't shouldn't actually be a problem here. All right, so, but it's probably not gonna. Well, I'm just, I'm just drawing way too many shards. All right, so I'm gonna go crackling vortex here. Uh, let's see. I'm gonna give it plus five. So, and if it decides to block, I can always use the crackling sprout to to save the damage. Nope. It's not going to be doing that. So he is now down to 11. So th this is this is a pretty bad draw. Um, but even though that this is a bad draw, if if you guys are watching this right now, um, there's still a number of cards that will pretty much auto win me the game. Um, I, I Boulder Toss um, is one of those cards. It will automatically uh, win me the game. Um, what other cards? Are I think that's pretty much it right now. Okay, Burn. Uh, burn can help, but not really going to be doing that much so i'm going to proceed to the attack phase okay attack there pass priority it's going to block okay now i'll crackling sprout it will end up giving a little bit more damage and push through more so does another point of oh uh, no it, i i dealt five all right my burns also do um three three damage instead of just one because of all right Let's see, he's going to push through damage there. Not a problem. Is he going to drop another blocker? Oh, yes, he is. I'll resolve that. And, well, I'm going to have force to burn it. And now I am in the land of top decking. Um, if I draw another shard, I can't believe I've drawn so many shards um, already. Wow, this is, um, this is just painful. Like, I should not be drawing this many shards. Okay, didn't get a card I needed here. That's that's a problem, but even I mean, come on! I've I've only gotten two, three cards that are not shards, and I'm still relatively in in this race to win it. So I I guess that could 
just speak to how strong the deck is and how and how well it can it can work. Uh, I think I need a little bit more now. All right, there's another burn. All right, so oh, that that's all I needed. So I go grabbed a shard, and now I'm gonna burn for three damage. So even though like I, that was a really bad draw, you got to admit that was a bad draw. Even though it was a bad draw, I still was able to get through enough damage. Yes, the guy only had 15 life, but um, you can see that was not actually a good example of how the deck is supposed to work. Let me play another round. So that was a bad draw. Hopefully, I'll get a better draw this time around. Um, there's only 25 shards in the deck, and I think half of the more than half of the cards I drew were shards. I got four non shards, and I think nine shards. Uh, probability is not that high for that. All right, and now, uh, let's see. I think I, I think I have to draw again. I cannot. If I was going second, maybe that would have been okay. Okay, there, there. That's okay. This is a, this is a decent draw. Um, and it's still hurting me just a bit, but this this deck has a much higher potential. So savagery, shard of savagery. Go ahead and draw. Get a, a ruby shard. Now, there's only four Crackling Sprouts in the deck, and those are your only wild cards in the deck. So you really don't need that much wild in order to get your deck going. All right, so there's a Worker Bot. Um, pretty easy. Oh, he's going to give it 2-1. All right. Come on. Another Shard. I have a 2 out of 3 chance. Okay, perfect. So I can do that. Um, I could Crackling Bolt here, but I think I'm going to try and save that. And, and see if I can work around some work work through some magic here and get this deck to work like I want it to. All right. Oh, it's a three one. Oh, that's and a malfunctioning warbot on the table. All right. You know what? I'm gonna burn. Uh, I'll burn the worker bot. Yeah, I'll burn the worker bot. It's a three one defensive. I don't like that. Move it off the board. Pass priority. Okay. Okay. So. Here, I can drop that guy down. Um, I will go I'll straight up to a crackling bolt here. Now, the reason behind this is um, I want to get to a, I want to, if I get a shard on this turn or the next turn, I am golden. I, th this is how the deck is supposed to work. Um, and let's see if, and I have two chances to get a shard. Um, very, very, which is going to be very helpful. So here, I'm going to go ahead and put down the Gore Master. And I, w I will play the shard, and actually, uh, actually, I don't think I need to. No, I don't need to here. So the logic behind this is I'm going to play the ruby shard next turn, which is going to, um, wait, here, I got I to gotta make sure I, I do, the, do this right. So I, wa I want to raise up his base power as quickly as I can. Um, to get a lot of a lot of power, so I'm gonna play the crackling sprout. So you're gonna see him double up or more than double his power from one to six here, because I'm also gonna gain a shard. So so he's all up to six. Hero power, get it up to nine, right? Now um, play a ruby shard. Get it up to eighteen. Crackling bolt. Get it up to thirty six. Proceed to the attack phase. 36 damage. Let's see if he stops it. Nope, he doesn't stop it. He takes 36 damage in one turn, and this was on this was on turn five. So straight damage. Even if he had a blocker, most likely he's not going to be able to stop it. Um, you know, sometimes they do have time ripples. They do have some other cards that can slow you down. But that was a pretty strong um, representation of what the deck can do. Now let's go ahead and take a look at that deck. All right, taking a look at the card manager here. Let's take a look at the deck and the equipment. Now, things that work well with the deck, Boulder Toss. Target troop you control deals damage equal to its power to another target champion or troop. With this, you can actually, I, with it, you saw what how much damage was dealt. You can deal 72 points of damage or um, one of those things where if they have a lot of blockers out on the field and you don't have the crush, it gives you another way out. Um, Besides just trying to use um, Crackling Sprout for Crackling Sprout or the Stink Troll for Crush, you can also have Boulder Toss to get around it just in case they say have a first strike or a swift strike. Um, so that's another useful um, item there. Also, the Lightning Elementals. When this deals um, combat damage to an opposing champion, gain a charge. 
because it does have swift strike you gain you can double up the power on the gore master because it swift strikes first also using the uh using the um, the crackling sprouts or the stink trolls on the lightning elementals so even if they block you can if you deal one point of crush damage to your opponent it still doubles up the gore master so that is also very very helpful now, um, taking a look at everything else, everything else seems pretty explanatory or that you saw. Veteran Gladiator allows you to take out a blocker, and this is where you kind of abuse the AI. The AI in Hex right now in the Frostring Arena does not know how to deal with Swift Strike or the Veteran, veteran Gladiator. It doesn't know that if you have a Veteran Gladiator, it's not gonna, you, can, you can stop it from having a blocker, so you can make the game make play mistakes. Also, Lightning Elemental, the Swift Strike priority, it, it will try to attack you, not thinking that the Lightning Elemental is going to block because it has Swift Strike. So you kind of get away with uh, abusing a little bit of the AI there. Um, taking a look at the two cards that are PvE cards, the Brutal Commander is used in here to try and grab your Gore Master or any Orc that you need specifically. If you need a Veteran Gladiator or your, your hand isn't as strong as you want it to be, drawing that Brutal Commander and is very, very helpful because it lets you draw that additional orc that you're looking for. Also, if you take a look at that equipment, the Zealot's Skull gives the Brutal Commander speed. So on turn 3, you can drop a 1-3 with Rage 1, swing with it, and you can immediately pull an Arena Regular, and then uh, so on and so forth, grab larger and larger guys. Finally, the other orc that is in here that is pve is zokoi the high cleric now the two gems that i have in here are speed and also when this enters play it deals damage equal to its attack to target opposing champion also if you notice its ability if it has dealt damage to an opposing champion this turn you can ready um, the high cleric and another target so all of a sudden you could be behind you drop this on the field you deal four damage speed you deal another four damage and with anything else that you're attacking with and then you have an immediate additional combat phase with this with this character and someone else on top of that i i believe um, it has crush so that you can push through that extra bit of damage if you need to um, it, it the damage just all adds up very very quickly all right let's go ahead and take a look at the equipment that i am using down over here you have the stink boots just because um, anytime you can get a little bit of additional damage on your stink trolls stink trolls very useful for giving crush to the higher priority targets and playing the crackling sprout who knows you might be able to get plus one plus one just a little bit more to finish off your opponent um, there's the brutal commander speed conflagration handguards um, it makes your burns deal three damage instead of two. I've won a couple of games because of that. I think you, I think you saw that earlier, where the burn did three damage instead of two, hence the win. And then finally, there's the crush. If you guys have any questions, let me know. Um, I'll try to respond to questions about hex here. This hex has really turned into a lot of fun now. Now that there is the frost ring arena, and you actually have something to kind of grind out and and work towards. So for anyone who really liked old school RPGs and MMOs, where you where you like a little bit of that grind, where you're trying to explore dungeons and trying to collect more things, this is a definitely fun game. I've had a lot of success with this deck. Hopefully you will too. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Hope you guys enjoyed it.